Imagine you're in a room that's filled with your favourite people. You're basking in the warmth of familiarity and comfort. Everything is comfortable, everything is predictable, and everything just seems perfect. But then a thought creeps into your mind. What if you decided to venture beyond the known? Make yourself comfortably uncomfortable. Now, I've spent some time thinking about this paradoxical word, comfortably uncomfortable, where fear and exhilaration collide and growth and self-discovery thrive. While I was thinking about the overarching topic of today, which was uncharted territories, I thought to myself that the first time that I was actually faced with an unfamiliar environment was when my parents decided to move to India. I grew up in the UK, and when I was 10 years old, my parents decided to move to India with my brother and I, in hopes that we'd be closer to our culture and closer to family. Now, I have to be honest, I really struggled. I struggled with the new people, the new perspectives, and the new environment. But as they say, that hindsight is a wonderful thing. And I realized that that unfamiliar environment laid the foundation for me to embrace unfamiliarity and be resilient. Now, there was also a point in time where I thought that being comfortable was um, something that I, uh, you know, a comfortable environment was something that I thrived in. But then I realized that the comfortable became my, the uncomfortable became my known. It also opened, moving to India opened my eyes to a very lucrative business opportunity, aside from obviously new people, new perspectives. Um, I don't know how many of you in the room remember, but we used to get these uh, long, fuzzy decorative wires, which were called pipe cleaners. Um, and I remember that I realized that they weren't available in India at the time. So what I did was every single summer that we used to come back to the UK, I got a pack of 100 pipe cleaners for one pound. And I ended up making them into decorative pencils and I sold them to my classmates for 40 pence each. I was extremely proud of myself and I completely thought of myself as an entrepreneurial wizard. Uh, my point is that this uncharted territory, it heightened my sense of observation. I was able to see opportunities and I was able to notice things that other people simply found mundane or ordinary, simply because they existed inside of their comfort zone. I've also always found it so fascinating as to why people are drawn to unknown territories and also the barriers that stop us from exploring them, sometimes our own psychological ones. So I wanted to talk about two different things that lead humans to exploration and uh, specifically going into venturing into uncharted territories. The first one is curiosity. Curiosity is the fundamental driver of exploration. It's the basic human instinct that leads to discovery, that leads to exploration, that leads to us wanting to know more. Now, I remember this one time, I have a farmhouse in Northern India, and I remember that one weekend, I decided to take a trip up there with my dad. And while we were on our peaceful evening walk, or peaceful at least for me, um, I remember that I could barely breathe, and due to the smoke that was coming out of a nearby field, and I asked my dad, I said, what is that? And he explained to me that when rice is harvested, there's a lot of rice husk and straw that's left behind. And in order to clear the field, they end up burning the rice husk and straw so that they can plant the new crop, which leads to massive amounts of air pollution. Now that really stuck in my mind and I started doing a lot of research around the properties of rice husk and waste. And then I realized that rice husk and waste they have a high content of silica, which makes it waterproof and termite resistant. So I did my research and I decided to use my mum's kitchen as my very own experimental grounds uh, by using her microwave and absolutely destroying her cooking utensils. Um, I am not disowned, which is wonderful. Um, and Greenwood was born. Greenwood is a low cost building material that's made up of rice husk and straw, made from affordable, made from rice husk and straw that is an affordable solution to housing in India that's used by the underprivileged. Now my point is that I've always been really curious, but what was different about this time was that my curiosity was fueled by a passion to find solution to a problem. 
It was curiosity that was paired with the want to change that led to innovation. Now, another thing that I think leads to um, basically exploring uncharted territories is embracing chaos. Now, chaos could be in the form of physical displacement of yourself, or it could be in terms of a shift in the way that you think or your mentality. I was reading this amazing book called Anti-Fragility by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, where he talks about the concept of anti-fragility, that while fragile things break, when subjected to stress or outside change, the things that are resilient withstand that and become stronger with time. Now, this basically means that when you are subjected to stress and chaos, instead of hiding or shying away from it, you should embrace it. Another quote from his book, which I personally really like, is that wind extinguishes a candle, but it energizes fire. Many a times I've been the youngest person in the room, but instead of let that deter me, I've used it to my advantage. Your thoughts, your opinions, and your perspective matter. You speaking up in environments where you think that your voice doesn't matter is you venturing into unknown territories. There have also been many times where I have been comfortably uncomfortable and there's so many forums where I thought that why exactly am I here? Does my voice even count? Be it from speaking at UNICEF at the age of 15 to being on a panel discussion with Warren Buffett to speaking at the Women Economic Forum to speaking to all of you here today. But there is one single thing that has been held together with one thread and that is my belief in the uniqueness of my own opinion. Every single person here today has a unique opinion simply because it's fueled by the differences of our lives, it's fueled by the different experiences that we have had. Now picture looking through a kaleidoscope. With every twist and turn, you're revealing a new color, you're revealing a new pattern. So basically this is what makes the world so fascinating. Your difference in perspective is what makes the world so fascinating. I want to share with you a few key things that I have learned from embracing unfamiliar situations and truly trying to make myself comfortably uncomfortable. The first one is surround yourself with people that you think matter to you. The people that you surround yourself with matter. Um, last year, I was at a Forbes conference and I was speaking to this wonderful woman and she said, surround yourself with people that deserve to have a front row seat in your life. Every single opportunity that I have had over these years has simply been because I've been fortunate enough and also put in the hard work to build and curate connections with people that I have truly found inspiring. I find storytelling just so inspiring and learning from different people and their stories and really truly going up to them and asking what it is that made them stand out or what was it that made them have a shift in mentality for them to be able to go out and you know, get what they want. Mentors are so important. I think mentors are the fundamental thing that can make a difference. Find your people in terms of speaking to people and finding out their journey. Someone could be going through or traversing the same journey that you're trying to go through. Or if not the same journey, they may be facing the same self-doubt. They may be facing the same obstacles that you're facing. So learning is the fundamental thing and surrounding yourself with the people that matter, matters. The second point is keep sight of the shore. Now, I think this comes with a caveat because it depends on your risk appetite, how far into the ocean you're willing to swim without a life raft, I assume. So basically, we're bombarded with content on motivation, on just going out and doing everything, and probably my speech included, where I'm motivating you to charter uncharted territories. But sometimes it is so important and so powerful to understand the rooms that you're not meant to be in, the rooms that are not meant for you, and having both the vision and also the courage to walk away. Convention is always going to give you a step-by-step -step guide as to how it's meant to be. You're meant to graduate, you're meant to get a job, you're meant to get certain marks, but then listening to that consistent voice in your head sometimes pays off. We are a generation of instant gratification. 
However, waiting in the wings, waiting for your time when it's right, is definitely going to serve you. Everyone has their own timeline. And I know it's so difficult for me to stand up here today and be like, just wait for your time. But this truly means something. Whenever something's meant to come to you, it will, but in its own time. It's OK to go with plan B so that you can have a better plan A. For me, my sure is my parents. Throughout my life, there have been people that I have gone back to. It's almost like they, you know, when I go back to them, I gain new perspectives and I come back rejuvenated. It's like they provide me with the life supplies to be able to charter uncharted territories. The last one is developing a hip pocket skill. So Indra Nui talks a lot about developing a hip pocket skill. So a hip pocket skill is a specialized skill that sets you apart and adds unique value to both your life and your career. This alludes to you finding confidence in your skills in an ever-changing, volatile landscape. So also, in order to find that hip pocket skill, you sometimes need to know what you're good at, and that can be so confusing. Um, for me, I think it's finding what you're good at also stems from something that you're passionate about. When I entered the workplace, I had so many questions in my mind as to what is it that I uniquely bring to this table? Because when you're in a competitive environment and you're surrounded by brilliant people, it becomes so hard to find your own individuality. But with trial and error, I realized that my hip pocket skill, if you will, is thinking about problems uniquely, thinking about problems from a very different innovative angle. Now, I have to say this, but I think thinking is so underrated. We are always boxed in brainstorming sessions of one hour, so driven by an output, so driv driven by a deliverable. But what I've started doing, and I would encourage all of you to do the same if you are of the innovative mindset, is blocking some time to actually think just for the sake of it. Um, I get together with my friends and we practice blue sky thinking. So I would ask questions like, what is the future of the consumers of tomorrow? How is an airport experience of tomorrow going to look like? And asking those questions becomes so important. And that entire free thinking, blue sky thinking session allows me to take all of that and apply it at my workplace and really you know, challenge conventional ways of thinking. Now, as you contemplate your own uncharted territories, remember the power of curiosity Remember to embrace the beauty of chaos, but most importantly, don't forget to leave a trail for others just like you. Being a woman of color, I have thought so much about diversity and inclusion and the power of it. And I've always thought that standing out has been my superpower, and I've always thought that way. But I was having a conversation with someone and she mentioned, to, she mentioned a really different angle around thinking about diversity and inclusion. She said that if there's a big bowl of M&Ms, they're all blue, and there is one red M&M in between, it will definitely stand out. But what about that question of belonging? What about that question of belonging that sometimes we forget about? It's that feeling of warmth that, yes, you belong here, you deserve to be here. So whilst we explore the unknown, lead by example, and embrace our uniqueness, Let's not forget to bring belonging and create environments of belonging for the ones to follow. I'd like to leave you with a quote and a ponder. It is only those that risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. So what lies on the other side of your comfort zone? Thank you so much. Yeah.